ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local win, local now. Member FDIC. It is Thursday, March 25th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Coming up today on the program, we're going to hear from Jared West. Jared entering the transfer portal, and we're going to talk to him about his decision to leave the Thundering Herd and why uh, he felt that now was the time to do so. Also, we'll get your phone calls in, as we mentioned. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about this Marshall soccer match against West Virginia yesterday. It happened. Nobody got to see it except those in attendance, 400 in attendance in Morgantown as Marshall, eighth-ranked Marshall, getting beat by the Mountaineers, one nothing. You look at the stats on this, though. You think to yourself, wait a minute, Marshall should have won this one. And Marshall was the better team statistically, right? Uh, Marshall had 12 shots. West Virginia had four shots. Uh, Marshall had five corner kicks. West Virginia had two. Marshall had... Really, no uh, no challenges for the most part. Uh, Marshall only had four fouls in the uh, second, three in the first of seven fouls. 16 fouls for West Virginia. And what happens? Well, one gets away from the herd, and West Virginia wins. Uh, big deal for them, beating eighth-ranked Marshall. Again, nobody gets to see the game. It was uh, not live streamed. It was only uh, streamed on the campus radio station. And I think that in the future, that should maybe be a, a bigger consideration, especially you get number eight coming into town. doesn't matter if it's Marshall or any other team. And I got kind of an idea why that wasn't streamed yesterday. They don't have a production set up for certain things the way Marshall does. Marshall's got its production set up inside the Cam Henderson Center. So it's easy to set everything up for their they have a production truck. And you got to take the truck over and the truck was getting set up ready for baseball. So they can't just set the truck up and then run back over at least the logistics there in their minds. Whatever the case may be. It was not stream yesterday. I think uh, the ball was dropped on that one, especially with two programs that are trying to grow soccer in the state of West Virginia. And hopefully this one gets to be played again and again. I, I think it's really good when these two schools get a chance to go after each other. In baseball, West Virginia gets pounded. Marshall gets upset in soccer. Hey, that's fun. You don't want to lose, but at the same time, that's fun because you got him in baseball, and I'm sure you were talking trash to your friends. You know you were. You were talking serious trash to your friends about the baseball game, and then I'm sure they were turning the favor to you today, and you're probably annoyed by that. But it's fun. It's fun. It's completely what should happen. So I'm, I'm glad the baseball and the soccer teams can work this thing out and, and make it happen. But uh, we're going to turn our attention to basketball here in the next few minutes. Jared West is going to come on. And Jared is among a few of the Thundering Herd basketball players that have decided to enter their names into the transfer portal. Well, Jansen Williams, the latest name to announce, he is um, in the transfer portal. Iron Bennett going to go play with A.W. Hamilton. And, of course, you know they've got a relationship. makes perfect sense. And then Jared, he's wanting to put himself out there, put himself in a position to test himself, play against higher-level competition consistently. Nothing against Marshall. It was nothing Marshall did, according to what he has uh, said and he has uh, posted on social. So we're going to chance to talk to him in a little bit and uh, kind of get his thoughts on where he might end up, where he's looking to go, what he thinks the future holds for him, all of that. Uh, he definitely was fun for interviews. Get a lot out of him. I, I knew what we were getting when we talked to him, and, and we get a great breakdown. So I'm going to miss that from him. But you know, maybe he can um, maybe he can give us some insight on to where he thinks he might end up. What's he looking for? What's the best fit for him post-Marshall? So that's coming up here in the next few minutes. 
I'm looking forward to talking to him. And uh, we're going to try to get Jansen on, see if we can get Jansen on. Uh, Iron's already uh, – he's, he's an EKU now. He's an EKU signee. He's playing for them now once they get back into it. So uh, we can probably get a chance to talk to Jansen. Don't, ha- don't have to go – I don't have to go through an SID. This is the first time I've been able to just to call Jared up and say, look, come on the show. I didn't have to go through an SID on that. So um, we're going to try to get Jared on here in the next few days. I'll tell you what, uh, since we can, um, since we want to talk to him and, and get him on as soon as we can and talk to him as long as we can, we'll go ahead and hit our first break. When we continue, uh, we're going to hear from former Marshall basketball player Jared West on what the future holds for him when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Buckle up, Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We got the news a couple days ago that one of my favorite players, and I'm not just saying it because he's on the phone on hold, one of my favorite players, Jared West, has decided to uh, put himself in a position to uh, test himself uh, against um, all comers. He's trying to find a, a spot for him that will help him uh, make that transition to the next level when he joins us in, on the program now. And uh, I'm just kind of curious, man. Uh, was it my questions when I was asking you stuff on Zoom? You just get tired of seeing me? Is that where you're leaving? I, I kind of feel bad about this. Nah, man. No, man. I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to miss talking to you guys, man. It was definitely not you guys for sure. But, um, you know, you guys do a great job. And uh, I'm really appreciative of all the support and all the coverage and stuff like that, man. That That's always meant a lot to me. It's um, it's sad to see someone you like go, especially players. You, you form attachment to them. And, and that's a testament to you that you have such a strong bond with the community, with the Marshall family. People are going to miss you. But at the same time, it, it feels like um, almost uh, everyone's really supportive of you and your decision to do this. Uh, were you worried that when you made this decision that maybe you know, people would be a little sad, upset with you because uh, you hate to lose somebody? And you, know, you you were pretty clear on your reasons why you wanted to make this move, but were you worried that, okay, uh, I hope they. Uh, I hope people understand. Um, no, I wasn't too worried. You know, I think um, I've got a lot of support from the Marshall community and um, the school, the fans, the people in the community, my coaches, my teammates. You know, I feel like they've done a really good job of uh, showing me love and support throughout my time here. And um, I wasn't really too worried. You know, there's always a couple here and there that, you know, might disagree or have a, a negative comment, you know, but that, but that happens, man. And I'm, I'm not holding that against them, but like you said, for the most part, um, it's been all positive. It's, a, it's been all thank yous and showing gratitude and being thankful and showing love and support. And I appreciate that. And um, just, you know, I want to just to be clear, you know, I didn't leave for anything that, that Marshall uh, did or didn't do, you know, it was no bad blood, nothing bad happened, nothing wrong happened. I just, I want everybody to know that Marshall didn't do anything wrong here. You know, I don't, I love Marshall. I'm grateful for my time here. And, um, you know, I'll, I'm, I'll feel, I'm blessed to be a part of uh, the herd family. And it feels like it was easier for you to do this with a coach like Dan D'Antoni, who understands, knows why you're doing it pretty supportive as well, because you have, dreams you have aspirations you want to go to the next level you want to see how far you can go and this is an opportunity now for you to put yourself in maybe a position which is not comfortable because you've got to go out there and put yourself in a spot where you have to prove yourself again to a new team and you're looking to play a different competition and the best way to do that is hopefully play for a power five school where the competition night in and night out is going to be different Conference USA we know is good, but you want to be seen, you want to be known, you want to be recognized, and you want to be tested. And to do that, you got to put yourself out there for that. And it seems like your coach was really supportive of that. Yeah, man, no question. Um, when I talked to Coach Dan about it, he was he was supportive, um, very receptive, and very respectful. You know, um, it, like I said, it was no bad blood. And, um, you know, it definitely – 
it made it easier on me knowing that he didn't, you know, a lot of coaches could have been negative about it, disagreed or, you know, said something bad about me, but he didn't do that. And, um, you know, I appreciate that from Coach Dan and um, all the coaches really, and that, that helped me out a lot. Do you have an idea so far where you might end up? I know it's still early, but there are schools that have reached out, I understand. Uh, is there any idea yet of where you might end up, or what are you looking for in the next destination? Um, there are a lot of um, schools that have reached out, but I haven't made uh, my decision yet. But um, there are a lot of good um, coaches out there that have been recruiting hard and doing a good job and doing things the right way and stuff, so I really do appreciate that. But at the end of the day, man, I just want a chance to um, – to win at the highest level, compete and and play at the highest level, man. I really believe in myself to where I feel like I can play and um, really be impactful and contribute on a winning team at a high level. So at the end of the day, that's kind of what my goal is because competing for a national championship is something that I've always dreamed of, and um, that's something that I've worked my whole life to achieve. And, you know, now that I have that opportunity, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. Jared West is joining us, making the decision to uh, enter the transfer portal. And we'll, I'm sure, find out sooner than later where you're going to end up and who you're going to work with. But do you have anything you're looking for specifically, location, league, any of that factor into your decision-making? Or are you just looking for the best fit for you and where you think you can be able to uh, test yourself? I mean, honestly – you know, you're looking to be challenged, and so are you looking at a school that can you can compete with, challenge, be challenged for? I mean, what what's the criteria for you in your mind? Um, I think, like you said, it's, I think the most important thing is kind of fit and opportunity. You know, where do I fit? Where does where does the coach see me fit? And um, you know, the identity of the team, the DNA of the team. How does that mesh with me? How does my DNA compare to that? And things like that. Um, you know, location. That's something that you always want to consider, you know, because you, you want your parents and family to be able to come watch you play. and You want to get a chance to make it home when you get time. But, you know, for a year, I think that uh, I can deal with the location change or they can deal with it as well. But uh, for me, man, I just want, again, I just want to get a chance. I just want an opportunity at the end of the day. That's all I'm asking for. Um, you know, no one's going to promise me playing time uh, or anything like that. So, I just want to get an opportunity to play at the highest level, can compete, and, um, you know, find that school that the coach and I feel like is the best fit and opportunity for me. Jared West joining us, uh, entering the, the transfer portal. Um, you, It's a lot of courage to do that because you're putting yourself out there. Um, do you think you would have done this if um, – if things would have maybe, because the, the pandemic changed everything, I guess is what I'm getting at here. With the pandemic, uh, this kind of allowed you to to take that risk that normally you couldn't take because you're a pretty loyal guy to Marshall, and you could have played out your career at Marshall. You know, everyone would have loved you, and you, know, you would have had a, a, a you would have had a great name no matter what. But now you have this opportunity with the pandemic that kind of did did that start maybe making you think a little bit more okay this is this pandemic you know a lot of bad things happened but this has really opened up something for me so I can take this risk and know that whatever happens uh it's going to end up good oh no question I mean the pandemic is really the only reason this is an opportunity you know no if there was no pandemic um my eligibility would be up and my college career would be over. So um, with the pandemic, obviously, you know, I can't wait till it's over. You know, um, I hope everybody's still staying safe and everything like that. But at the same time, this the, it gave me an opportunity with the rules and with, co- with the COVID rules and the NCAA and stuff like that. Um, it did. It gave me an opportunity and it gave me a chance to kind of go through this process. And I wouldn't have had it if it wasn't for the pandemic. So um kind of like you said it was just an opportunity for me and I felt like it was a good opportunity and a good chance for uh for me to take how difficult was it uh when you told uh your teammates uh that uh you're gonna make this uh choice and 
you're going to leave because uh, you grew close to uh, several of your teammates over the last few years. And I know that had to be a hard aspect, uh, knowing you're not going to be on the court with them anymore. Yeah, that was probably the hardest part, you know, kind of just telling them what was going down, what I was going to end up doing. Um, You know, you you build that bond over, you know, for some guys it's four years, three years, whatever it is. You know, you build that bond with guys for a couple of years and you, you go to battle with them every day. You go to practice with them, travel, road trips, go out to eat, stuff like that. Um, it, that that's, that's something that's hard, you know, to kind of go about. But um, they were also very supportive. Um, they were very receptive. They were congratulating me, thanking me, and they had my back. You know, they, they supported me. They had my back, and um, – I'm forever grateful and thankful for that because, um, you know, they made that part easy for me as well. You know, it was hard telling them that, but they, they were very supportive, and that, that made me feel a lot better. Is it safe to say you're closest with Tavion in that group? And uh, if, if that's the case, uh, how would he take it specifically? Uh, I know he probably was excited for you. Yeah, um, between, you know, Tavion and Darius, I'd say, and then probably Jansen. You know, those three guys are probably the closest relationships that I've built over the year. But definitely, I mean, talk, when I talked to Tay, I mean, again, he, he was very, very supportive. You know, he, he understood why I was doing it. He was very understanding. And at the end of the day, he told me, like, you know, I got your back. I'm going to support you whatever you do. And, you know, he was like, if you feel like it's an opportunity that can help you, bro, then go do it. And, you know, that made me feel a lot better. But, again, I think that just goes back to the bond that uh, Tavion, and I, Tavion and I have built. Um, obviously, you know Tavion's a really good player. But as far as our relationship goes, we've been really close over this this last three years, man. And, uh, you know, talking to him, he uh, he was very supportive, and he had my back through, the whole, through it the whole time. Jared West joins us entering the transfer portal now. You have aspirations for the NBA. Are you going to take advantage of the opportunity where you can go, declare, find out what they have to say, learn about you, you learn about what you need to do, and then uh, come back? Is that um, is what what you're looking to do, or have you even put uh, much thought as to what's going to happen after you uh, find a new home? Um, I haven't put much thought into it, honestly, um, because I've been going through this process, but um. I'm not going to say that there's not a, you know, there's no chance that I might not do that. There's a chance that I go through that process potentially, maybe. But uh, honestly, I, I really haven't put put much thought into it because I've been going through the through this process. Jared West joins us. Uh, we're gonna miss you, man. That's that's the thing, because you knew. Yeah, every time we had a post game or a, a Zoom call that we were asking for you specifically most of the time. Um, a lot of guys maybe don't get that opportunity. You you really uh, stood tall among your peers because every time we had an opportunity, we wanted to talk to you. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but you were definitely uh, someone that fans loved, the media loved. Uh, I mean, you you're probably going to be a beloved person at Marshall 20 years from now, uh, still. doesn't matter where you go. You could play for anyone, and you'll still be someone that uh, people will remember fondly 20 years from now, what you did, what you meant to Marshall. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate that for sure. Um, I, I, You know, anytime you guys wanted to talk, I was definitely there, and um, I enjoy that stuff. You know, I enjoy talking to you guys, giving you guys information and stuff like that, but – Again, I'm just forever grateful and thankful for the opportunity to play here at Marshall. Um, I'm thankful for the support, the love and support that they've shown to me. And like you said, the media, the fans, everybody. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm very grateful for it. You know, a lot of people um, would love to be in that, in, in that type of situation and have that type of career, man. And I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to have done that here. And um, Marshall always uh, will hold a, a special place in my heart, you know, across the board. Um, and that's something that I'll never forget. I'll cherish all the memories and all the time that I've had here. I'll never forget them. And, um, man, I'm going to miss you guys too for sure. So it, it, the feeling is mutual. Jared West is with us. Okay, this is just what if now before we let you go. Um, completely hypothetical <laughs> here. What if time? Uh, I've got two of them. 
I'll, I'm just going to give you okay. one though. I, I'm going to say I'm, I'll save one privately. The other one though, I'm, I'm good with. Wherever you end up, what if that brings you back to the Henderson Center or uh, facing off against the herd? Let's say uh, non-conference game or tournament game, and you're facing off against the herd. I mean, how is that going to feel, knowing that they're going to be happy for you, but at the same time, uh, they're going to make you work as hard as you probably have ever worked? <laughs> that would be crazy, man. That, that would be wild. Um, <laughs> going through that would be would be really tough, um, seeing all my friends and my teammates and my coaches playing against them. You know, instead of going to war with them, I'm going to war against them. That would be tough, man. But, uh, you know, I would expect them to come and play hard and be ready to go. And, and you know, I, I would, you know, I would feel the same way. I'd be excited and ready to go and ready to play, man. So, uh, it, it would be weird for sure. It would be different, but <laughs> I guess when the game would start, we just have to compete. All right. I'm going to follow up on that. What if you're on the court and you're usually the guy who asks for the toughest assignment. You're like, let me guard him. Let me get him. I got him. That's you. Okay. Yeah. Who Who's that player on Marshall that you're going to be going after? Let me get him. Let me guard him. I'm going to say Tavion. I mean, that's your guy. <laughs> you and Tavion. Yeah. I know you two have had that talk. Like, okay, when it comes right down to it, who who's gonna who's gonna win that matchup? I mean, look, man. If we're playing against each other, and I'm guarding Tay and he's guarding me. <laughs> It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun and competitive. He's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to make it hard, just like I'm going to make it hard. But it would be it would be fun to kind of look back on for sure. But, you know, that would be, again, it would be different for sure because I'm not used to that. Obviously, we compete against each other at practice, but in a game, that's a totally different animal. But, you know, it will be fun for sure. Uh, that would be something I feel like we would look back on for a while. You know, I would pay for that matchup. I, I I, don't know if it would ever happen, but that would probably be the best matchup for both of you ever because you know him, he knows you. And again, we're in what-if territory, but uh, that would be the one time that uh, I would just sit back with my popcorn and just enjoy the show there because I know you two would give everybody their money's worth. Oh, it, it would be so fun, man. That would be crazy. All right, I'm <laughs> going to left- be a crazy time. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you off the hook on that what if question. Uh, hopefully uh, we see you again soon. Uh, I hope wherever you land, you take them far and uh, you get to go wherever you dream to go. And if that includes uh, the NBA, uh, I'm all good. I'm all for it. Just don't go for the Celtics, and, and we're gonna be all right. That's all I'm saying. No Celtics. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jared, take care. We will talk to you soon, and good luck. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Jared West, he's entered the transfer portal. Uh, we don't know where he's going to end up yet, but he is definitely uh, looking to to put himself out there to get to the next level. And hopefully, again, that's not the Boston Celtics. No, Celtics fan. Sorry, I'm just not. All right, Tay or Jared? One on one, Tay or Jared? If you had to pick, you had to just put it all on the line, and it's Jared. And Tavion, one-on-one. Who do you take? Who do you go for? And Jared's not on the phone anymore, so Nick, who do you take? Where do you go with that matchup? Who's That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. That's why I asked it. Do you take you take Tavion? You think Tavion would look at this and like, oh, okay. All right. You know, because you know how he is. He's he he would find re- he would probably find reasons to be mad at him. He would Jordan this thing just just to find a reason to go up against him other than that's my guy, but I can't let him, you know, not this this one time, I can't let him show me up. And then, you know, Jared, he's always like, give me the best guy. Give me the best guy. I want him. Give him to me. And you know if it's Marshall versus whatever team that Jared is on, Jared is going to say, Coach, um, I want, give me Tavion. He's just going to say that because he knows Tavion's the best guy. Who wins that matchup, though? I'm going to have to go, I think, with Jared just because I'm thinking back on his career and stuff, and I can't remember a time where the guy going in was the best player and they outplayed him. 
offensively. Not too many, but this is this is Tavion Kinsey we're talking about here. I'm not. This isn't. This isn't Bassey or anybody else, which are all yeah great players in Conference USA. But this is his guy, Tavion Kinsey. I mean, this is like Godzilla versus Kong here, man. This is Batman versus Superman. So are you saying Tavion is Superman and Batman is Jared? What are you saying here? Honestly, I mean, like Tavion still would probably have a good game, probably. Okay. But Tavion I think would have Jared a good game. would probably have, be the best person to guard him if I had to pick somebody. Okay. So you heard that. Tavion, you heard that. Nick said Jared would eat your lunch. I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Tavion, Nick, Nick Verzellini said that uh, Jared West would eat your lunch and, and take the lunchbox home with him. Be a fun matchup, though. I would. I would love to see. I'm not not practice. I'm not talking or just hanging out playing, playing in the uh, you know, in the yard here or playing at the rec center. I'm talking about. All right, it's a game. It is a game. We have people in attendance, and uh, they are keeping score and they are putting the record down when it's over. I would love to see that matchup, and. That would be definitely fun. That would be you know, if it happened like that, completely. All right, we're going to take our next break. We'll get your phone calls in 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. More coming up. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to be a part of the program. Phone lines this hour brought to you by White Claw Heart Seltzer. It's made pure. Thundering Herd, women in action. Uh, they had to start this thing early today because of the weather. And we've been trying to keep an eye on it a little bit. Nick Verzellini with me in studio as well, our in-studio producer. And the, the ladies... They would like to, to get Marshall back on the winning track as far as the soccer side of Hurt Athletics is concerned. And I know the men's side, uh, they're probably stinging right now. The women here are in the second half, and it's not looking good for the ladies. Uh, they are trailing 3 nothing. What can you tell me about what's happening here, Nick? Yeah, they are trailing 3 0. Uh... Old Dominion just scored a few moments ago to make it 3-0. And the Monarchs have kind of dominated this one. 11 shots to Marshall's five. Um, Marshall has nine fouls in the match as well. Just five fouls for ODU. So they're playing a pretty good um, match overall. Is ODU just a little bit cleaner than Marshall? Marshall's a young team. I lost a lot of the players from last year and obviously a new head coach. So it might take a little while for the women to get on par with the men, but um, – this one's not looking good for Marshall. No, it's going to be a tough uh, season for them. And they're 0-3 in conference right now, 2-4 and overall. Just have not had any uh, major success, unlike the men, which uh, until yesterday were the eighth best team in the country. They'll probably drop, not out, but probably drop in the poll. A little bit big win for West Virginia. So not a good couple of days here for the Thundering Herd. And then softball, that, um, that doesn't happen as well. So uh, things are changing up a little bit for the schedule. And don't be surprised that more things uh, change. And uh, softball was supposed to play yesterday. Uh, Tomorrow, um, you've got baseball taking on FAU. How good does the baseball team feel after beating West Virginia? You you love to win that one if you're West Virginia or Marshall, right? Maybe more so for Marshall because Marshall hasn't had the best run in baseball against West Virginia. But you win that one yesterday, or I'm sorry, the day before. You win that the day before. Now you go into uh, FAU uh, on the road. Definitely a way to, to maybe bounce back. And I don't know. I don't know if we can get that baseball park built. Maybe this baseball team will be able to to take that next step. I know that's the thing that is the sore spot right now especially with what has happened with the pandemic and of course uh, tennis is going to be back in action Uh, tennis yeah you never know they play such a tough schedule if they win uh, it's a good win if they lose it's not a bad loss as well but Saturday is going to be really busy with golf tennis softball soccer baseball and softball all in action but tomorrow 
Baseball at FAU, the big one there, men's golf, track and field going on, and those are going to be afternoon events as well. Uh, we got to take our final break so we can get back on track. We will do so, and we will continue on with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 at AM 930. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Thursday, March 25th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. If you missed our interview earlier with Jared West, you weren't with us. Uh, The podcast is the best way to go get the program. And wherever you get your podcast is where you'll find today's program. We'll get it posted for you a little bit later on in the evening. So if you missed uh, that interview and you want to go back and get it, that's the best way to do that. Coming up tomorrow, we will be back on the program, getting you caught up on everything that's uh, going on. We've got, of course, seriously, a lot of basketball to talk about tomorrow as we're getting back into the swing of things. Again, the Sweet 16 done a little bit different. We're going to have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Sweet 16, Elite 8. Then we're going to have the championship game. Of course, all that action is going to be right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So I'm looking forward to getting the bracket going again. Uh, I just miss the I miss the afternoon basketball, though. You know, you wake up, you, you get ready for work, you get breakfast in, you, you get into the office, you do some work, and then lunchtime you just stop doing what you're doing and watch basketball. At least that's how it worked for me. I don't know if that was how it worked for everyone else, but I sat back and just watched a little basketball, listened to it here, you know, did some work. It was fun. Uh, we'll have that soon with baseball, though. And by the way, uh, we've got baseball coming up for you next year, so if you are wanting to catch some Pirates action, you don't have to go anywhere. we got the Pirates-Baltimore spring training game. That is coming up here next on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And the uh, Chicago White Sox right now looking at baseball action. Bottom of the fifth, uh, leading the Reds 5-1. to one. And, of course, uh, there's hockey action tonight as well. Lots of National Hockey League action on a Thursday, uh, including uh, my favorite team, the Rangers and the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, that's a guaranteed win for the Rangers there. Uh, if hockey's not your thing, of course, uh, there will be basketball action. The National Basketball Association will be uh, picking back up. Nothing really I want to watch there. Yeah, I'm kind of looking. Uh, I'm not a big Clippers fan. I'm, not a, I'm actually not a Golden State fan. I know a lot of people are. I'm not. Um, the Knicks have not been fun to watch for me for a long time, so I guess I'm going to be uh, skipping that for right now. But still. Baseball action, you want to catch some spring training ball, we've got it for you coming up. Uh, 6.05 is going to be first pitch, so we go on the air at 6 here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 9.30. And, of course, if you are inclined to catch some high school basketball action, uh, we've got on our Facebook page right now, as of this Thursday, March 25th at 5.52 p.m., uh, we have got South Charleston versus Cabell Midland. And, if you have not watched one of our games this year, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, and we have got the video for you so you can watch it. And with a 5.02 to go in the second, South Charleston leads Campbell Midland right now 22-13. to 13. So you can watch all of that action on our Facebook page. And again, all you have to do is search for ESPN 94.1. And you find the Facebook page, you'll find the video stream there. So if you uh, want to follow the page, you will see when we video stream games. And again, uh, we've been video streaming several Huntington High and Cabell Midland games. Hope to do more. And if you're interested in being a part of those broadcasts, give us a call here at Kindred Communications. Huntington High Cabell Midland game was pretty good the other night. Got a little chippy there between the two teams. They didn't seem to like each other. And I'm okay with that. It It was fun. I mean, uh, it did get a little, I don't want to say, chippy is probably the best word. I think chippy is the best word. And, of course, we're also following soccer right now with about, uh, I don't know how much overage time we're going to get here. It's almost to the conclusion here, but with 88 minutes and 44 seconds off of the clock uh, or into this thing, 
Uh, ODU is leading the herd three to nothing. Yes, nothing. I am not saying nil. Nick Verzellini, uh, our studio producer, as a student of broadcasting right now, you say nil. You're, you say nil. Uh, Jake. Jake Griffith, who will be calling these matches for the Thundering Herd on the home side of things, uh, says it properly, nil. I'm not saying nil. I'm not calling the match. I don't have to say nil. I mean, come on, let's be honest. What sounds better? Three to nothing or three to nil? Nothing, probably. Okay, I mean, I just want to make sure. And I I don't like saying, hey, the two teams are level. Never heard that one. Oh, yeah, they're level. It's, it's a, well, you need to learn that term. Yeah, I'll start put, using that. Seriously, you need to, yeah, the, the teams are level. What What does that mean? I know what it means, but what, they're, they're tied. They're tied. I mean, what's, what's no wrong score. with saying tied? Seriously. Why, why level? And what, in soccer, and again, I like martial soccer. So I'm a big fan of martial soccer. The sport after martial soccer does not exist for me. But they're level. Okay. And uh, you know you know what a fixture is? You know, do you, you know what that means? I don't think so. You don't know what a fixture means? Okay. Um, level's tied. Fixture is a fancy way of talking about the schedule. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, they've got a fixture on the schedule. I don't know if that's uh, I don't know if that's really the proper way to say that, but it's a scheduled match. So levels when teams are even. Fixture is a scheduled match which is yet to be played. So instead of saying, "Hey, Marshall is scheduled to play Old Dominion," um, you know. The fixture between Marshall and Old Dominion, I guess, is the proper way to say this. We better start learning this stuff, man. The Herd, even though they lost WVU, eighth ranked in the country, we better start getting on the ball here. I I don't know why they're called... I don't know why they're called fixtures. I guess it's because it's a fi- it's fi- it's predetermined it's, it's scheduled so it's it's a it's fixed so it's a fixture. Okay. All right, I'm fine with that. Uh, and of course, you know, it's not a game; it's a match. You're writing this stuff down. You're not writing this stuff down. I knew that one. Okay, you knew that one. I should write down the other ones. Yeah, you should write down. You, uh, okay. You should Google this stuff as well. Helpful terms uh, to know when watching English soccer. I said, let's see what this is. Uh, football. Football. Uh, football. Um, you know what set piece is, right? Yeah. Okay, that's that's a good one. That's an important one. Uh, it's the terminology, man. I, I, I'm trying. I really am trying. Since you brought up the brackets, I might win the bracket poll. The 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 group bracket that we're doing, yeah, the one that I did not put that much effort and energy into. You're beating me by ten. But oh, am I seven. winning? No, you're not winning. Oh, okay, Chris Jenkins so is winning. obviously I'm not winning because I did not put that much energy into that one. But you're still beating me right now. Okay. It will come down to if Gonzaga or Baylor wins the national championship. Okay, who did I pick in that bracket? You pick Gonzaga. Okay. So if Gonzaga wins, how do I look? Well, there's three other people that pick Gonzaga, and then I picked Baylor. Okay. So if Baylor wins, then I would probably win. You know the bracket that I'm actually I actually paid attention to is our very own office bracket here. The uh, the employees. I am first place barely in that one, and. We have a salesperson who is second place. Could uh, we could switch positions just by a game or two here? And then if our former show producer Gabriel Sellards, if Baylor hits for him, he will beat all of us. And he has limited interest and knowledge of basketball. You know, he understands the game. He knows the game of basketball. He 
He knows. He knows. He's not. He's. He doesn't care. It's not a thing for him. And so, of course, he's playing. I don't know why he's playing, but he's playing, and he's he's, he's beating almost everybody. He's beating people who actually spend time all year long thinking about this, and that's usually how brackets go. And with that said, we're out of time. I want to thank Jared West for joining us today on this ride that we do every day with you. Back tomorrow for our Friday edition. We'll do it all over again starting at 5.06 right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.